What's up guys? This is Automotive Anonymous. If you're new to my channel and I'm not doing physical therapy, I'm doing car reviews, truck reviews, and zero to sixties. Today we have another 2023 Silverado. It's a custom in glacier blue metallic, which is probably my favorite color for this Silverado. I borrowed it from Twin Falls Chevy in Southern Idaho. It's several thousand below MSRP, so I'm going to link it below if anyone's interested. Otherwise, we're going to dive right in with the walk around, go through the specs, initial driving impressions, zero to 60, and final thoughts to decide if you should potentially be one of the half million Silverado buyers for this year. These are really cool. It's still part of the fourth gen that started in 2019, although they did have a facelift refresh in 2022. The Custom is a really cool trim level. It's the second of the nine. I've basically done all of them except the Outliers. I haven't done a work truck because that's like a fleet vehicle. And I haven't done a ZR2 because those are usually sold before they hit the lot and they're pretty evasive. Anyways, this is really cool. Crew cab short bed. That means the bed is just under six feet long. It has a payload of about 2,000 pounds. They can tow about 9,000 pounds with the tow package. It has just over eight inches of ground clearance below the axle. You have the spare tire right there and a 342 final drive ratio. So it's a decent combo of putting the power down but also being economical. Speaking of, the gas tank's right there on the driver's side. It gets 18 city, 21 highway. That means with a 24 gallon tank, your road trips could be up to 504 miles between Phillips, unless you need a, a personal pit stop before you get there. It does have functional arrow on the front, which is cool. So you can either grade some tree, uh, cheese, not to be confused with trees, maybe a stick or two, but not a tree. It doesn't have a flow tie, but it does have that really nice Chevrolet in the grill. It's a 265, 70, 20 inch wheel. Those general tires have really good tread. They look fantastic. Five star crash test rating with a lot of adaptive safety features and six airbags. I think it's time to hop inside, see what else it has to offer. The door panel, these, they're black, they look good. And there's a lot of storage. You have a nice soft touch armrest. You have a decent size handle with a little bit of a lip, all of your buttons, locks, two bottle holders and some snacks, or you could even fit a teddy bear horizontally, not, not on its back, but on its side. Nothing on the door sill, rubberized mats and pedals, hood release, OBD2 port, electronic parking brake, four by four options, lighting options. You have the windshield wiper stock and power seats that look really good for being black, not too aggressive of bolstering. So most people, big or small, you're gonna fit in here. And with how big the cab is, you could probably be up to seven feet tall and still be pretty darn comfortable in the Silverado. We have a grab handle on the A-pillar and push button start. It also has remote start, which is a pretty cool feature for a custom. But the infotainment displays, pretty basic. They're all physical in place. You don't have a lot of options because you don't have anything on the right of the wheel. You just have your adaptive cruise features on the left. Horn sounds pretty good. You get the small display, but you know what you get? Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, which is a pretty cool feature. The screen does do a pretty good job. There's the back of camera. The lines do move when you turn the wheel, which is a nice feature. Physical buttons throughout for HVAC. You have to turn off auto start stop every time though if you want. You do have USBs, a 12 volt, and a house style outlet, three prong in nature. Pretty good storage for the center console. Being a six seater, I really like these trucks. You have a good amount of space up there. You could fit probably about seven iPads stacked on top of each other. There's the seat and there's your extra hidden storage, which isn't too bad. Probably put about four and a half more iPads down there. And then there's a little bit of a strap to drop the seat back down. Up top, we just have our standard Onsar settings and our lighting. Bluetooth speaker up there and then mirror. So not too bad, let's turn it off and hop in the back. In the back seat, the door panel looks basically identical, minus some of those extra option controls. So you have soft touch black, easy to clean, easy to wipe down, materials, bottle holder, sideways teddy bear, unless you're gonna put some snacks. Comment below, tell me what snacks they are. While you're commenting, tell me what you wanna see next. Also, why not like and subscribe if you're interested at all? Otherwise, nothing on the door sill. We have rubber line mats down here and a 60-40 split bench, which is easy to lift up. 
you have your extra tire changing tools down there in the jack under the passenger side and then it easily with a little bit of a tug pulls right back down then hidden storage in here what you gonna hide comment that below while you're at it you can always fold those in drop down the headrest and we have a b pillar so we're gonna pull up to the back at five foot 11, I have more than a hand's width of room back here. I have a map pocket so I can be chauffeured. I can be the backseat driver. I can tell them where to take me. And while I'm doing that, I have some ventilation. I don't have any plug-ins or heated seats, but at least I'm gonna get some hot or cool air, whatever I need at the time. And then a couple armrests in the center. It's short, but it is very sturdy. And you even have a candy holder right there if you want. LED lighting up top, very good headroom. That's probably about that high above my head. So it feels fantastic sitting in the back of the Silverado. Let's hop out, try not to break a hip on the way down and come around to the back, to the bed. It does have the black package on it. So black emblems and inline right there. Soft touch to lower. No bed liner though, where is that thing? We're gonna have to get one of those installed. It does have three tie downs on each corner, 12 total. That is good for 500 pounds a piece. And then we have another outlet back here. Pretty cool feature, easy to lift. Let's go around to the passenger rear, see what you have. Basically identical door panel. They don't want either person in the back seat to be discombobulated by what the other has and what they don't. So you still get a map pocket, you still get the same entry, a uh, B pillar handle, storage, and a 40 split. This person has the jack, the other person has the tool, so you have to work as a team if you're riding back to Silverado and a tire goes down. When you're riding shotgun, is there enough room to fit a legit shotgun in the Silverado? Like back in the day. You do have a lot of room, you're basically only missing those extra controls over what the driver has, but you get a second bottle. So if you want two bottles, right in the front. If you want one, right in the back. Nothing on the door sill. Physical adjustments to recline and to slide down there. Our backpack is safe with those six airbags and five star crash test rating. And then you have a storage up here. What are you putting in there? Some of the higher trim levels don't have the handle, but they have a button. So it's a little bit sneakier where you can hide. And then a locking glove box. With all of your extra features, your locking lug knots, your key, some of the trailer adapters, all the things, the window sticker. Time to go look under the hood and see what the 2.7 liter turbo looks like. Pop the hood. Under the hood, there's a lot to look at. It has 310 horse, about 430 pounds of torque. The peak horse comes on at 5,600 RPM. The peak torque comes on at 3,000 RPM. So it feels very punchy, especially at altitude like where we are. You have the air filter, all the ducting, all the baffling through the turbo side to get into the engine. You have the coolant and the brake fluid reservoir. You have the windshield washer reservoir. You have the oil dipstick, the belt on the front, the alternator is hiding just down there. And then the battery on the passenger side. Probably a pretty decent amount of room to work in. You just have to take off all this baffling and ducting and then it's gonna open up a lot to you if you ever had to work on this engine. But otherwise, I've driven a few trucks with it. I'm pretty impressed with it overall. Let's drop the hood. It's now my favorite part where we get a teleport inside, take it for a drive and then see just how fast it is. Initial driving impressions of this 2.7 liter Silverado is it's really cool. The interior of the cab feels really dark with the jet black seats but you have really good visibility when you're looking out the windows the B and C pillars really aren't that bad and then those mirrors although they look really stylish and good from the exterior they're fantastic you can really see basically what's going on around you because it's a truck you know where the dimensions are you know where it stops and if you've seen my other Silverado videos you know when I'm cruising in one of these because the camera clarity is actually really good I just sometimes leave it running because why the heck not? It's kind of fun. You can hear the turbo spooling basically everywhere if you give it just a little bit of gas and I'll be quiet. You can probably see that on the RPMs, it builds around 3000, but I don't actually start feeling it till 4000. That's when really a lot of power 
hits you in the butt, puts you in your seat. Acceleration, I think, is absolutely adequate on this. It's really comfortable to drive. Armrests are a little bit hard. I think they'd soften up over time, but they're not uncomfortable. It's just that they're hard. They don't really squish down. They give you support. So if you have to reposition, scoot around, I think you're probably gonna be pretty happy with that. The brakes aren't sharp. They're just pretty linear. I don't wanna say they're squishy at the front, but there's not like a sharp engagement point. They're just, the more pedal you push, the more they stop. Because it can tow 9,000 pounds, driving unloaded, honestly, it's probably gonna stop pretty quick because those brakes have to be good from the manufacturer to be able to stop a big trailer or whatever you're towing. These weigh about 5,000 pounds, so they're not super heavy, but they're a lot heavier than normal non-truck vehicles with that 12-foot wheelbase. It feels very planted on the road. The bolstering on the seats, again, is pretty darn comfortable. With the 10-way power, you can easily find where you want to be sitting in this truck. I feel pretty high up. I feel like I look down on most other vehicles, including a lot of trucks outside of diesels, trail bosses, things like that. It's really just a nice place to be. All the interior features are right where you want them. Of course, on the Custom, being the second of the nine trim levels, you're missing out on a few things, like heated seats, if there were ventilated seats, a sunroof, just where those blank buttons would be other options. I always forget to mention this in the walk around, but Silverado does have a nice storage place up here. I really like that. Just leave your M&Ms out of the sun because they're gonna melt, but at least you could easily wipe them down with some baby wipes. Maybe some wet ones, unless you have a different brand you prefer. I'll give you guys just a little bit of acceleration here. We're getting close to the private road for the actual zero to 60, but half throttle traction on. It still easily smokes the tires gets right up to speed. We're at about 4,000 feet of actual altitude. So a lot of gas trucks are down 10 to 20% depending on the weather conditions because hot air is less dense and doesn't combust the same. But thankfully having a turbocharger compresses the air and helps us out. Kudos to you, little turbo. I'm really excited to see what this engine can do in the new Colorado. I can't wait to give you guys some reviews on the Colorado and Canyon when those start showing up at the lots but I've driven enough 2.7 Silverados to know that I like them. Assuming they're gonna be your reliable engines, you know, you're not gonna burn them out, towing the max capacity, max payload all the time. They're rated for what they are. They must be overbuilt, I'm assuming, especially where the 2.7 is used in other applications like some of the Cadillacs and some other offerings, and there's a pretty decent aftermarket support for them starting to build up. So I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty reliable, but that's what warranties are for, if not, right? You never know what's gonna happen. Let's get to our private road though and do a zero to 60. Zero to 60, we have traction control off. We are in four auto. So we're gonna brake grab it and see what the eight speed can do for putting the power down. Density altitude is about 3,400 feet. So this vehicle, even though it's turbo, is still down on power, probably about 6% or so. Here we go. Very hard, very aggressive launch, and then it definitely did slow down a bit. But True Zero 60 came in at 7.07, .07, which from what I can remember is the best of any of the 2.7s I've tested. Good job, little 2.7 four cylinder. Let's get to our final thoughts. Final thoughts of the 23 Custom Silverado in Glacier Blue Metallic is I love it. I like the way it drives. I like the way it looks. I think the 2.7 liter engine is honestly a really good engine. As a combination of low end torque and decent MPG. If you've seen any of my other Silverado videos, you know I just love the Ecotec 6.2 liter. I also really like the LZO diesel. But if you're going between the 2.7 and the 5.3, I think you can't go wrong either way. I think if you live at altitude, drive them both. You might be more impressed with this though because it just puts the power down better and it loses less as you can see in GPS testing if you've watched any of my stuff. Otherwise, half a million of these are sold a year. Are you buying one? They're really cool. They hold their value pretty well, especially in today's time. I think if you're buying a truck, you probably should be using it for work purposes unless you can just afford it because for about 46, 47 grand what this one is selling for, you can get a really nice whole lot of other vehicles for that price point. If you want to spend another 
five to 20 grand, you can get a very loaded version of the Silverado like some of the other ones I've tested. So comment below, are you buying one of these? What do you guys think? If you happen to want this one, remember, I'm going to link it below. And if you like my stuff, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Otherwise, I hope you guys take care. Have a fantastic rest of your week, and I'll see you on the next review.